Hey everyone. Okay, so this next topic is about the Starling curve and again about cardiac output going uh, along the lines of, you know, afterload, preload and just learning about those things. Okay? So, this is a curve that you will see very very often on questions on the USMLE on various tests everywhere, okay? And what it is uh, is on your, your y-axis here, we have cardiac output, okay? And on our x-axis here, we have preload, okay? Now, again, whenever you see a graph, the first thing you need to do is look at the axis. Look at what the y-axis is, cardiac output, okay? Look at what the x-axis is, preload. That's the first thing you should do whenever you see any graph on, on the USMLE, okay? Because that'll tell you what this graph is about. Now, in a normal heart, what did we say? We said that as preload increases, cardiac output increases, right? Right? Because as I fill the heart more, there's two reasons more volume because I'm getting more volume more blood okay that's causing my cardiac output to go up what's my other reason because of contraction remember what I said is that when the heart the cardiac myocytes when they stretch what happens they get a reflex response that they say okay you know what I'm probably filling up with a lot more blood now um, I need to contract harder to get more of this blood out so how do I read this one line right here? I say as preload increases, cardiac output increases. Okay? That's how you should be reading. That's what you should be saying to yourself when you see a graph like this. As preload increases, cardiac output increases. Okay? Not the other way around. It's not, oh, as cardiac output increases, preload increases. That may be true because what's happening? Your cardiac output, the blood that goes in the aorta, is eventually ending up back in your right atrium, right? It has to come around it and do a complete circle. Now, they're going to give you some other lines here. They're going to give you this line here. Then they're going to give you this line here. Then they'll say, you know what? This is A. This is B. This is C. B being normal. This is a normal heart in B, okay? Then they say, okay, a 59-year-old um, gentleman comes in. Um, he has been complaining of shortness of breath with exertion, okay? He's been complaining that um, when he lays flat at night, he coughs and can't breathe. What's that called? Orthopnea, right? What else? He's been noting that um, his uh, feet are a lot more swollen. What's that called? Bilateral pitting edema, right? So what is it sounding like? It's sounding like something along the lines of CHF. So they say this 59-year-old guy comes in with these symptoms. Which of the following would you expect his Starling curve to be? A, B, C, D, etc. So you have to look at this curve and think, hmm, okay, well, if B is normal, then what would this guy be? You have to remember, in CHF, what is their heart function like? What's their ejection fraction? Is it normal, above normal, or below? It's decreased, right? Their ejection fraction is always decreased. What does that mean? That means now, for any given preload, any given preload from, you know, point A here, point B, anywhere, the preload from A to B, my cardiac output will be lower, okay? That's what that means. So what would this patient, this 59-year-old guy um, with shortness of breath, orthopnea, edema, what, where is he going to be? He is going to be C. That's your answer. They love asking this question, okay? So he will be C. Anyone with CHF has decreased cardiac output. So let me give you an example, okay? We have heart A here, okay? This is a normal heart, okay? And I have a preload of, let's say, 20 cc, just speaking hypothetically, okay? And I send out, let's say, half of that, 10 cc's out, okay? Well, let's take a look at heart B here, which is a CHF heart, congestive heart failure, right? And this is obviously a damaged heart. And let's say I have the same preload, 20 cc's. How much do you think this guy's going to put out compared to the 10 cc's the normal guy put out? Let's say 5, right? Which is a fraction of it. 
it's about a quarter of it, right? Okay, so his EF is about 20%. Now, how can I relate this to the graph here? I have heart A, let's say this is 20 cc's right there. The preload is 20 cc's that I picked right there, okay? And I say heart A is normal and it goes up, goes up. This is my point right here, 20 cc's. But for the same thing in this heart, the CHF heart, I only get out 5 cc's out of the 20 cc's. Same thing. This is what it is, my cardiac output difference. You see this? The difference here? That's the difference in cardiac output. The preload didn't change but the cardiac output decreased from being normal up here to down here, okay? And they love asking these questions. Now, anytime they have CHF, it's always the one below here, down here, with the decreased cardiac output, okay? Remember, for any given preload, I'm gonna have decreased cardiac output. What's A now? Let's see, A, um, I have the same preload, let's say it's 20 cc preload, right here. I picked the same line. So remember, draw an imaginary line down here, okay? 20 cc's, but I have a lot higher cardiac output than normal. What could this be? And they give you um, this scenario. Well, actually, they don't even give you a scenario. Let's just say they give you this graph and ask you, okay, letter A, what does letter A represent? What state could this be in? Um, is this patient on you know, a mountain? Is this patient doing this? Is this patient doing that? Is it CHF? Is it hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Blah, blah, blah. Well, what you should think of is, is that any sympathetic activity. Any sympathetic activity. What does that mean? That means my beta receptors on the heart are increasing my heart rate and they're increasing my contractility. Okay, both things here. That's why I can fill the heart with 20 cc's, the same thing. Let's take this next heart. Okay, I'm going to put in 20 cc's, like I said, it's the same preload for all three, but how much more do you think my cardiac output is? I'm probably putting out a lot more, 15 cc's, compared to normal, which is 10, and the CHF, which is 5. Make sense? Okay, so sympathetic, that means exercise, okay? If they show you this graph right here, and they label things A, B, C, D, and they ask you, oh, which of the following scenarios most likely is best suited with A? Think about sympathetic, most likely exercise, or anything that involves catecholamine. Now, let's take it a step further. What if they asked you, which of the following medications most likely would contribute to um, causing A? Well, you'd have to think of, okay, something is causing an increased cardiac output. Which medication causes increased cardiac output? Digoxin, right? They love that question. They they will show you this graph and ask you which of the following drugs. Digoxin. They might ask you what scenario is the patient in. Exercising. Okay. So you see how they can go anywhere with this with this with this um uh, graph here. They can ask you tons of things. Digoxin can do it. What else? Um, epinephrine can do it, right? Epinephrine will cause uh, increased heart rate contractility. Any catecholamines um, can do it. Okay. <clears throat> now let's say they give you another line which is right here okay this is D and they ask you okay which of the following scenarios best correlates with the letter D and they say you know what B is normal C is full-blown CHF what would D be? Well, you think, hmm, it's not normal, but then again, it's not CHF, right? It's CHF plus digoxin, okay? It's a medication that will increase my contractility and increase my cardiac output temporarily. So it's basically uh, a change of this much cardiac output, okay? So that's another question that they might ask. CHF and once you give the patient digoxin or what's another medication that can increase um, my contractility? Dobutamine, right? It increases contractility. So this is a really, really good example that I wanted to bring up to you is that 
don't get too reliant on one medication name. When you look at this graph and I told you about digoxin, don't count on it, don't bank on it that they're going to give you digoxin on the test. They will switch it up on you really quick, okay? They'll put another medication there and you'll think, oh my god, I, I don't know this question, I don't know the answer. You do know the answer, you just have to figure it out. It's very easy, just rely on your physiology to figure it out. It's just think of any medication that will increase my contractility and pick it. Dobutamine is a great choice, okay?